Video shared by Bobby Pratt from the town on Estero Island in Lee County shows debris strewn everywhere and buildings turning to piles of rubble. The boat crashed onto the shore, and most of the pier was gone. It is one of several barrier islands in southwest Florida that have been worst hit by Ian's anger. Governor Ron DeSantis said Thursday that the power grid for Lee and Charlotte counties likely needed to be rebuilt, and the sheriff in southwest Florida said the 911 center was overrun by thousands of stranded callers. Some with life-threatening emergencies. But Charlotte County Director of Management Patrick Fuller expressed cautious optimism that the worst-case scenario might not materialize. On another barrier island bearing the brunt of winds and storm surges, the flyover shows that the integrity of the home is much better than we thought, said Fuller. However, rescue crews are trying to gain access to the islands and other parts of the county to determine the full status of all our residents. The U.S. Coast Guard began rescue efforts hours before dawn on the barrier islands. DeSantis said. More than 800 members of the Federal Urban Search and Rescue Team are also in the area. A piece of the Sanibel Causeway fell into the sea, cutting off access to the barrier island where 6,300 people normally live. The bridge connecting Pine Island to mainland Florida is also impassable, DeSantis said. At least one person has died in Florida, a 72-year-old man in Deltona who fell into a canal while using a hose to drain his pool in heavy rain, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office said. Two other hurricane deaths were reported in Cuba. Images of the devastation wrought by Hurricane Ian's strong winds were revealed on Thursday as residents chose to stay outside. Ian was a terrible category for hurricane with winds of 150 miles per hour when it came ashore on Cayo Costa at around 3 p.m. Wednesday. About 90 minutes later, the storm made its second U.S. landfall this time just south of Punta Gorda with 145 miles per hour winds. Fox weather correspondent Robert Ray reporting live from the marina on the shores of Fort Myers, one of the worst affected areas in Florida, saying the concrete pier had split in two. Bob Benham said he witnessed the marina being ripped apart from his apartment in a nearby 33-story high-rise where he rode a storm, it was the strongest weather I've ever seen, said Benham. According to Benham, he saw the wind change direction around 3 p.m. and start blowing on the beach. That's when the destruction began. The wharf started to weave and then they started to separate and the boats were tied to the pier, they didn't separate from the pier and they all started piling up like Tinker Toys Venom said it was just amazing. Rescue efforts are ongoing throughout Florida. Helicopters are used in places where roads are damaged making it difficult to reach those stranded by storms. At least two deaths believed to be related to Hurricane Ian have been reported in the state, according to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Hurricane Ian destroys the roof of the Port Charlotte Intensive Care Unit, flooding the hospital ward and turning the stairs into a waterfall. In Fort Myers, a 10-foot storm surge tossed the cars like bath toys and crushed them on the road. A catastrophic storm turns the city into a lake and leaves a trail of destruction that defies imagination. These are some of the stories emerging from Florida's battered west coast. Scott Carlos thought he would be safe from flooding in his fourth-floor condo. He's wrong. Ian threw a 10-foot storm surge toward his home in Fort Myers, drowning most of his neighborhood. We actually had water getting into my fourth-floor condo, just from the spray and waves crashing into the building Carlos said. The whole parking lot was completely destroyed. At one point he said the water was at least 10 feet high on our east side, which is right across the street from the beach. As he surveyed his surroundings after the storm, he saw debris everywhere. Everyone's garage is basically just telling. Carlos says cars everywhere are wrecked on the road. Most of them actually went across the street. The need for air rescue was so urgent that members of the Coast Guard began rescuing residents while Ian was still pounding the area. We didn't even wait for the storm to pass last night. We have helicopters in the air. Coast Guard Admiral Brendan McPherson said Thursday. We rescued 13 people along the coast between Fort Myers and St. Petersburg. That number could pale in comparison to the number of people still needing to be rescued on Thursday. We are preparing for what will be a very busy search and rescue day, said McPherson. Right now we have a plane in the air with the Florida National Guard actively pulling people off the roof at Fort Myers. Oni Atkins of CNN affiliate WESH reported in Orlando when a driver tried to cross a submerged road Thursday morning it didn't work. 
The rapidly rising floodwaters flooded the woman's car and threatened to wash her away. The car finally got stuck then I saw a hand come out, I heard Help Atkins say. He searches for the crocodile that dropped the power cord and the first responders who can save the woman. But no one was there, he said. So dark. She didn't seem to care much about cars, but she was very worried and had to get to work, where she worked as a nurse. Saving lives is definitely the main thing for him, trying to work, during, the storm. Medical staff at the Port Charlotte Intensive Care Unit had expected a strong storm, but nothing so severe. We have about 160 patients at home and our roof is off the roof over the ICU, oh said Dr. Birgit Bodin, internal medicine specialist. We had a torrential downpour coming, which then descended the stairs, which then went up to another floor. A staff member wading through the murky water transferred the patient to a safer part of the building. Some rooms built for two people suddenly accommodate three or four people, said Bodin. He said the air conditioning was not working, but the backup generator had allowed all other vital systems in the hospital to keep running. Luckily, everyone did well and was actually, surprisingly, in good spirits because they could see that we were trying the best we could with what we had. Even Florida residents hardened by decades of hurricanes couldn't believe Ian's devastation. It's a completely different storm, said Collier County Commissioner Rick LaCastro. He said storm surges reached 12 feet in parts of his district, including Marco Island and Naples. I have survived Irma and other hurricanes which are more about wind and yes always water, says LaCastro. But the storm surge is something we've never seen here with this intensity. Meanwhile, many humans were able to evacuate and get out of harm's way, but some animals were not so lucky. However, there were some bright spots, for the Good Samaritan was able to save some four-legged friends from the rising floodwaters. Megan Cruz Scavo shared a video of her boyfriend walking outside in rushing water to rescue a cat lying on outdoor equipment. He hit back at a Twitter user and said that the incident took place at his girlfriend's parents' house on the beach in Bonita Springs, which was built to weather the storm. News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Enton posted a video on Twitter of a man rescuing a dog from a boat moored at a marina in Fort Myers. The man is seen carrying the dog through the water before it is placed on the ground. The man then grabbed the rope and the two ran across the street to safety.